Yeah, g'day, g'day. Coming to you from a new home with a new bike. And in fact, I'm in a whole new country. Oh, <laughs> Palawan, an island in the Philippines, touted as one of the world's best islands. But oh, I'm thankful to be here now because I fear that that title is quickly diminishing at the very hands of its own people. But there is more than enough time to complain and whinge about deforestation. There is a whole lot of beauty and a whole lot of goodness to go and see. So let's jump on board this bad boy and rock and roll. From a lifetime of love and now a growing fear for our natural world, my challenge is to climb some of the world's biggest and most beautiful trees, all in the name of promoting reforestation. We have all played a part in this destruction and now we all need to play a part in its regeneration. We only have one world and the future of it and all its inhabitants is in our hands. So come climb with me as I seek out spectacular specimens and spruce social change. I am Kit and welcome to Kit Climbs. Alrighty, I had to get my head wrapped around the fact that I'm riding on the right hand side of the road now. <laughs> Uh, and, and also that the people here are just the most absurd drivers and also pedestrians just totally totally careless about their own lives and others but kind of makes things interesting <laughs> that perfect example of the quality of driving right in front of me people seem to think that this right hand side of the lane is just people can just do whatever they want look at this good stuff we're right in the middle of well it's a, it, it's a city it's not a really big city but Right in the middle of the city in these spectacular trees. I, I, again, I'm not sure. It looks, it's got that sort of canopy like an acacia, but I, I just don't know. I'd love to know what kind of tree they are. They've got these amazing ferns all over them. Absolutely gorgeous. And they're scattered all throughout the city. Absolutely awesome. This is interesting planning. I mean, I've already noticed that people do not like sticking on the right hand side of the road here but this is just <laughs> oh my god just giving them the perfect excuse like what came first the pole or the, or the road <laughs> my goodness oh just just ridiculous <laughs> oh my god ah people what are we doing what are we doing <laughs> In the main city of Puerto Princesa, the, the poverty is actually quite confronting, but I do love the free rangeness of it, <laughs> the, from the children to the chickens. <laughs> and I was in search of a beach, and fortunately I was able to find one that I could actually ride my motorbike down onto. So that's exactly what I did. I rode around for a little while, and now we're going to pick up with me on the beach, launching into a rant. So, yeah, you have been warned. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spin some stuff. I have absolutely no idea whether it's true or not, but coconut palms, I feel like coconut palms must be the, the most widespread, naturally widespread tree in the world. And you always find them on the beaches. And I, it wasn't until not that long ago that I was sort of like, hang on a minute, but... What's happened? People are obviously not planting them here. It must be those delicious seeds, those yummy, yummy seeds, will drop wherever the coconut palm originated from, must have been close to the beach, dropped its seeds, tides come in, taken that seed right out into the ocean, and that seed has just floated across the ocean until it's ended up on another beach somewhere. Just like these ones here. Ooh. Just like these seeds right here will eventually get picked up by the waves and get taken out into the ocean and then end up on another beach somewhere. And then they'll get pushed up onto the beach and then they just sprout. They don't need to be planted or anything like that. They're absolutely incredible. You can just have a coconut seed on a beach and it will eventually just sprout out. And over time, millennia, they have just dispersed themselves over the entire world. It's just incredible. I mean, right there, there's a, there's a baby coconut palm. Pretty young. Would have just been a random seed floated up, found its way in there, and sprouted away. And coconut, ah, here we go. Here is a perfect example of what I was just talking about. 
Look, it's just sprouting out of there. This is probably not going to survive that well, but right there, other one over there, you can I can see the the seed. <laughs> it's just eventually we'll just throw out roots and take its claim. Really cool. I love coconut trees because they're delicious and they look lovely. Looking at these coconut palms, I can't resist and get myself a coconut to drink because they're delicious. Oh my god. I made ice cream. Oh, I should get some of that, but no, I just had my coconut and oh, it did not last long. So bloody delicious. And the great thing about coconuts is that once you're finished with them, littering and no negative consequences whatsoever. Ah! <laughs> it's the good stuff. I probably should have put it in that pile, but it doesn't matter. It'll just break down. <laughs> okay, well that was a lovely little stop at the beach. Where I find myself next, I have no idea. That is a crazy looking mountain range. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Oh, another one. Damn, the landscape out here is redonk. Damn. Well, that's pretty picturesque. Cleopatra's Needle. Maybe that. something that I wasn't really expecting to see in the Philippines. Considering most of the, the energy here is from coal or gas, nice to see some solar panels. Even it is in sort of like the most, I mean I've never seen solar panels in more of a picturesque place. And then this big dirty fence right in front of them, but yeah, that's a good start. Ah oh, crap. I mean, what's the point in living now? The chemtrails have got me. <laughs> ah, you pickleheads. Pretty good at finding these private beaches. And having a motorbike is uh, is very helpful for that, for sure. There is this funny little zip line that's sort of like zooping all the way across to right there. <laughs> a whole bunch of fat Americans just got off it. Excuse me, but they were fat, and they they were American too. So. Excuse me, <laughs> but I am still just struggling to find uh, a good tree to climb. Uh, obviously, tree tourism isn't exactly something that's overly popular, unfortunately. Oh, isn't that too good? It almost looks on the camera like there's nothing in front of me, but I am walking through water. And this is a great area. This is very much like I talked about in the last video. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put it up there somewhere. And it's these mangroves. There's a lot of little fish all darting around everywhere. And those little fish are harbored. The little babies harbored in those mangroves, protected. And then once they're big enough, they'll just get sucked out of the, the estuary here and into the ocean to live their lives and then probably immediately get caught by the fishermen <laughs> out there and then put on the plate of all the tourists that are around here. But <laughs> fingers crossed some of them make it out. This cool tree here. I mean, they're pretty amazing. <laughs> so resilient. So obviously just the weight of it has fallen over at some point. So the original trunk going in this direction but then the rest of it's just decided I'm gonna grow up <laughs> so I'll just go up in there and sit up there for a little while I wonder if someone could tell me what type of tree this is I mean it has <laughs> these are the leaves they look like fig tree leaves is this a fig tree? Mum, if you're watching, is this a fig tree? <laughs> uh, but I think this is a pretty good place. Uh, take a seat for a while. Uh, 
Oh, that's pretty nice. <sighs> Chill. <laughs> they know someone's up here. They just don't. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm up here. <laughs> they know there's someone up here. They're just too stupid to look up. Excuse you, doggy. I'm up here in a tree. Yes, hello. <laughs> Funny things. Ah, oh, that was cool. Sitting up there for a while. And time to get down. Doggies. Oh, hello, sweet thing. Oh, who's a smoocher? Oh, you're so soft. Is it because you spend all of your life at the beach? Hey? Oh, you're so stinky too. Soft and stinky, man. Hey? What a good life for them, hey? <laughs> hey, this is nice, hey, buddy? <laughs> I'm addicted to trying to pat every dog and there's so many street dogs here. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't get anywhere if I stopped to try to pat all of them. But they were, they were cuties. Lucky things hanging out at the beach all day. Not a bad life at all. Yes, I'm coming through, doggy. Thank you. I don't know what to think about all of this stuff, like single-use plastic and styrofoam it's a big no but then you go into a store that's like right there and you will buy styrofoam packaged noodles you will buy anything and it will be wrapped in plastic <laughs> like you will buy a bottle of coke it will be a, a plastic bottle of coke not a can if you don't know what greenwashing is it's that <laughs> it's literally carrying along a plastic container with a plastic straw in it. Oh, and so is this lady here. So what is the point of that sign being right there? I am just, it's bewildering, absolutely bewildering. It's much more important to me than that plastics one, but I would suggest that just like that plastics one, nobody gives a shit about it, <laughs> considering right behind here, it has been forested. <laughs> <laughs> just absolutely bonkers corruption or just people not given a flying bag of crap what is the point it should just be torn down just like everything else they are tearing down it looks like someone's occupied it and yeah it definitely looks completely cleared all behind those houses <laughs> it's rice patties I mean <laughs> it just doesn't this doesn't make any sense if you have a rule, enforce it, or just, <laughs> just ah, my brain hurts. A kilometer up the road from that sign is this. <laughs> just, I mean, like, what else can you do but laugh, right? Like, clearly, at some point, somebody gave a shit, but I guess the pressures have just taken over <laughs> because, like. The development cannot stop it. Can not stop the relentless push of humans. Hopeless. Passing just here, yeah, yeah, I can see. These are mango trees in here. So, obviously this land has been cleared and planted. It's been cleared clearly quite a long way back into the hills. But the thing with agroforestry is that they can put diverse species in there. So I can already see that there's mangoes, papayas, bananas, and that diversity is going to promote a little bit more of a habitat but it is also it means that with agroforestry it can feed the local community uh, there we go agroforestry farm with agroforestry it's going to feed the local community 
and also all of the production from it can stay within a local community as well so they can be sold to each other or taken into the main towns and sold as opposed to something like the the palm oil plantations which is most likely it's land owned by some conglomerate the farmers are still they're not they're not they're not winning in any way maybe they've got enough enough money to support their family might be able to buy a tv or something like that but <laughs> The majority of the money is going outside of those local communities. So agroforestry, as much as it still is requiring land usage, is a much, much better use of that land. Back to the city and I'm going to finish things off here. I thought here would be the perfect place with all of these beautiful mangroves in the background. Oh, once again, this is how it appears. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. So here we are back in Puerto Princesa. This is their slogan, where nature begins and never ends. Well, let me just leave you with a bird's eye view of exactly what's going on over there. And well, I'll let you decide whether that slogan stands true or not. Have a great week and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. But I don't miss you, baby.